Hi, this is Kerry with Filmmaker Central, and today we've got a video that was requested by a user in the Black Box members group on Facebook. If you don't know what Black Box is, it is the stock footage site that I use to sell my stock footage. I upload to Black Box uh, website. It then allows me to curate it, put in all the metadata, the description, everything, or I can assign someone else to do that and give them a share of the revenue, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. When I'm really busy, I just find a curator, have them do it so I don't have to worry about it. We get it up there and then Black Box ships it out to the top five agencies. And that's you know Shutterstock, uh, Pond5, Adobe Stock, and some others. And it, it saves me a ton of time from having to sit there and upload to each site. Each one does things a little differently. There's no standard for it in how you get your metadata in there, which is your description and your keywords and uh, all that good stuff. Every one of them is different. So by just putting my stuff on black box, it takes care of the rest and it's just a great way of doing things. So the question that came up was, how do I prepare my footage for upload? And specifically, the person was using a DJI Mavic 2 Pro. Now, if you're using the Mavic 2 Pro, the best settings to use are going to be D-Log, which is H.265, which is going to take a little more horsepower to work with. And you want the, the full uh, field of view. And uh, let's see. Um, well, those are the basic settings. Once you're there, you're kind of there in, in D-Log. How do we process that stuff? in DaVinci Resolve. So let's go ahead and take a look when we come right back. Okay, so we've got our footage here. This is my Mavic 2 Pro footage. And as I said, it's in D-Log, so it's a little flat. And we need to do a color grade on it, but we don't want a major color grade. We want it to be in what's called Rec 709. So I'm going to go through here and I'm just going to grab a few pieces. I like that. I'll add that to my timeline. I'll scooch ahead, see if there's some stuff I like. And just randomly grabbing some pieces. I'm not going to spend a ton of time whipping through this to get anything actually ready to upload. I'm not going to upload these. They're pretty boring uh, drone shots, but it'll give you an example of what we need to do. So doo -doo -doo, I'll just grab that shot, bring that down over here. This was kind of cool. Whipping along real low in this stuff. And yeah, you can see that the playback is a little jerky on this machine, and this is a uh, 5K Retina iMac that kind of loaded here. And if you need to work with these files, often it's best to do optimized footage. So I can select them all or just select one and go generate optimized media. Now you want to make sure that your settings are right for your machine. For the optimized media footage for this, you really only need ProRes 422 proxy because we're just working with proxy files. If you're on Windows, uh, there's a DNX kind of version of the same thing. And now it's going to play back a whole lot smoother. Make me, uh, allow me to do my edits here nice and smooth. Again, this was just some quick footage I, I shot just to show how to do this with the Mavic 2 Pro. Okay, so let's say we've got a whole timeline of, of things here, and now we need to color grade. So let's bring up my LUTs, and there's a couple different ways of doing this. So DJI has some LUTs available, and I don't have it here, so I'm going to bring up my web browser. And I'm going to go to Consumer, Mavic 2, I'm going to go to Downloads, and here is a D-Log M to Rec 709 LUT. So I'm going to download that, and oh, 
it's already a cube file. So let me go to my downloads folder. Okay, so I've got my DLOG M to rec 709 LUT here. I'm going to go to my preferences, or my project settings, I mean, down in the bottom right hand corner, this little gear icon. And I'm going to go to color management, scroll up here, open my LUT folder, and I have a DJI folder from some of the other ones. So I'm going to take this DLOG M to rec 709 and just drop it in place there. Go ahead and close this. And now I have to make sure I say update lists. This will make sure that the LUT list, where there it is, it just popped into place right there. Save that. And if I just double click on that, now you can see the difference. Now, while this is great for basically a finished uh, product here, I think it's probably a little too much for stock footage. It's a little too saturated. It's not going to give a colorist much margin to play with. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to pull my saturation down just a hair, not a whole lot. And now we can see kind of a before and after. So pretty washed out, not so bad. And then toning it down, that's going to give them a lot more room to play with it. And all they have to do to get it right back is bump the saturation, but maybe they need to mix this with another piece of footage. Now, if all this is the same, life is very easy because I can just go through each one and just hit equals to go to the next one, equals, equals, which is copy the grade from the last clip. Okay, I'm going to show you another way of doing this. And I'll just reset the node grade, reset the node grade, and reset the node grade. So what I just showed you will work in DaVinci Resolve 15. And it's the same concept whether you're in Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere Pro. You apply the LUT and you can just tone it down a little bit. So I'm going to go back to my edit page. Now all of these you know, are the same scene, they're going to get the same coloring. So in DaVinci Resolve 16, there's a new little tool I can use here called the Adjustment Clip. So I'm going to drop that into place, spread it across all of these. Now I'm going to go back to my color page. I've got the Adjustment Clip selected here, and I can double click to apply that LUT. Again, let's turn down the saturation just a hair, and now it is color graded across all of them. So if you have a lot of stuff that's the same, this is going to be a very easy way of putting it together. Now for our output, I'm going to go to the deliver page and I'm going to select individual clips and come down here to file. I'm going to change the file name to uh, stock Mavic and use unique file names, and I do not add the source frame count to the file name. Select render and start my render, and it will create those different shots as individual files ready for uploading. So pretty simple, but there's one more thing that we need to do when we're working with Mavic 2 Pro footage in D-Log, and that's add a lens correction. If you're using a Phantom 4 or a Sony a7 III or whatever in the log format, you don't have to deal with this. But specifically with the DJI Mavic 2 Pro, when you're shooting in D-Log, you're working in 10-bit color, and it's just too much data for the aircraft's internal processor to handle everything that it's doing as well as a lens distortion correction. So we're going to add that right now. So we're going to go back to our color page. And again, these are all the same. So I have this adjustment clip and I can do it right here or I can do it on the individual ones. So I'm going to add a node, go to my open effects and I can search, type in lens distortion, drop it on here. And 
this is kind of what it looks like before any corrections. So I'm just going to come over here and put 0.18. Boom. We now have corrected the lens distortion within the Mavic 2 Pro footage. We can take a look at the difference here. Now you're not going to see much of an impact on this type of footage because it's it's landscape. But if you are working with buildings and you know walls or fences or things that are supposed to be straight, you'll see them kind of bowed out in kind of a fisheye look. It's not a bad fisheye, but it's a little bit. So adding that lens distortion is really going to make a difference in some of the shots that you do. So that's it. That is how I take Mavic 2 Pro footage and get it ready to upload for stock footage. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Check that bell icon to get notified whenever there's a new video out. Be sure and go to filmmakercentral.com for all the different videos, tutorials, all kinds of things that we're doing over there. We're going to be having a contest soon, a giveaway for our 10,000 subscriber sign up. Uh, that's going to be coming up in uh, probably three or four weeks. And we've got some great prizes already lined up. So stay tuned for that. As always, folks, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.